Okay, in this example, we've got um, an iteration. What we're doing at A2 is we're using iterations to solve equations. But this is going just back to what you did at AS, where you had iterations. So what this means is you, you put the previous value in here, or the first value in here, and out pops a second value. And then you put the previous value in here, and out pops the next value. So to get started, we've got a starting value, x1. So to work out x2, we just have to substitute x1 into the formula in this term here. So 0 0.5 times xn, I'm going to take that to be my first term. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 plus 1, which is 1.25. Okay, then to work out x3, now I have to recycle this 1.25. Okay, so the first bit says 0 0.5 times, and then the previous answer times equals, and the answer to that is, do it on the calculator. Here we go, and the answer is... 1.625, and I keep going. Now, there's a nice thing you can do on the calculator, actually. If you want to keep recycling to the previous answer, don't want that gone on there, um, we can use the answer button down here, yeah? So if I want to do 0 0.5 times the previous answer, type in 0 0.5 times, and then I press that answer button, and that means 0 0.5 times the previous answer plus 1. So my next value, which is going to be x4, is simply... 29 sixteenths, which is 1.8125. And since I've shown my method twice, actually you'll get away with writing just 1.8125. Okay, now that's all this question asked for, all right? But to illustrate what's going on, the, the whole point of this is there's going to be a limit. Okay, so if I can get the calculator where you can see it. If I now just press keep keep pressing equals, it's just going to update that calculation. It's going to show me the next answer. So the next answer after that is this fraction here, which is that decimal, 1.90625. And if I keep pressing equals, eventually it will resort to decimals anyway. I can keep pressing equals and I can see that the answers seem to be getting closer and closer to 2. And you saw that there were some um, iterations uh, recurrence relations in, in AS where there was a limit. And if you remember, what you did to find the limit algebraically is you said, okay, if these values are approaching a limit, this limit is going to be the same limit as this one. So the equation is just going to be whatever the limit is, is 0 0.5 times whatever that limit is. So that's tending to the limit. That xn is tending to the limit. And then, just bear with me, and then I just need to do the plus 1 at the end. And this is the equation that's being solved. So the xn plus 1 and the xn have both tended towards this limit L. And this is a very easy equation to solve. If I subtract the 0.5L from both sides, I get 0.5L um, equals 1. And that clearly gives me L equals 2. And that's pretty much what we saw on the calculator. The calculator values were getting... Uh, if I keep pressing equals, the calculator will no longer be able to tell the difference between the answer and 2 if I press equals often enough. The calculator hasn't genuinely got to 2, it's just got to a decimal that's so close to 2 it can't display the difference. So, why is this converging? Okay. Um, Later on, we're going to actually look at how this, this can be useful when you're given any equation. We can turn it into a form where we can use this method. But the point of this example is just to be able to draw a picture that shows that these terms are actually going to converge on a limit, which we know is roughly 2. Well, in order to set up this diagram, we need to find our starting value, which was 0 0.5, and it's an x value. So we find 0 0.5 on the x-axis. So this is my x1, so I label that x1. Okay. And now I have to simulate substituting that x1 into the iteration. So the iteration was 0.5xn plus 1. So I've got the graph of y equals 0.5x plus 1. So that graph there is the one that comes into play whenever I use the iteration. So I can demonstrate substituting x1 into the iteration by just drawing a line vertically to the iteration line. Okay. Normally, this is going to be a curve, and I like to say we go vertically to the curve. Okay. Um, now, the answer to that, can you see that this y coordinate is about 1.25? That is my next answer, my next uh, x2. But I need to turn that from being a y coordinate into an x coordinate. I need to find 1.25 here. That's why we've got the line y equals x on the graph. Okay. All right. In, in one sense, it's this x, it's going back to the iteration. Uh, in one sense, that other graph is this side of the equation. That's a perfectly good way to think about it. But 
in terms of what what using the iteration, what this this graph y equals x does is it turns a y answer into an x answer. So if I come across to this point here, the y coordinate was already one point two five. Okay, so the x coordinate of this point, which is down there, is my x two value, which is now an x value, which is ready to be put back into the iteration. So how do I show that x two was substituted into my iteration formula? Answer: I go vertically to the iteration curve. So vertically to the iteration, and then the y coordinate of this has to become my next x input. So my x three will be this value down here nice put dotted lines in here so my x3 is this value whoops x3 is this value and then I would go up to the curve and normally the question gives you some guidance about how many x's you're supposed to label down here I can barely fit in now the dotted line and the x4 but I've done enough to show that this is called a staircase diagram I've done enough to show that the staircase is converging on this point here this point here is where x because that's a graph y equals x, equals 0.5x plus 1, which is exactly what I want to happen. This uh, iteration corresponds to this equation. I've used L, but another way of writing it is x equals 0.5x plus 1. So where these two graphs agree is where they intersect. So this is the solution here. And we know that that solution is x equals 2. And we saw on the calculator that the values are creeping closer to 2. So that's how this kind of diagram works. Okay.